Good evening friends and welcome to our reflection on the Word of God. Before we start, let us just pray. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to gather around your Word again. We ask that you will lead us through your Holy Spirit and teach us what it is that you want us to learn. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Right friends, then our scripture reading, that will be from Hebrews 6. And I'll be reading from verse 1 to 7. Hebrews 6, verse 1 to 7. Let us go forward then to mature teaching and leave behind the first lessons of the Christian message. We should not lay again the foundation of turning away from useless works and believing in God, of the teaching about baptisms and the laying on of hands, of the resurrection of the dead and the eternal judgment. Let us go forward, and this is what we will do, if God allows. For how can those who abandon their faith be brought back to repent again? They were once in God's light. They tasted heaven's gift and received the share, their share of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> they knew from experience that God's word is good, and they had felt the powers of the coming age. And then they abandoned their faith. It is impossible to bring them back to repent again because they are again crucifying the Son of God and exposing him to public shame. God blesses the soil which drinks in the rain that often falls on it and which grows plants that are useful to those for whom it is cultivated. Let me just read verse 7 again. God blesses the soil which drinks in the rain that often falls on it and which grows plants that are useful for those useful to those for whom it is cultivated. But if it grows thorns and weeds, it is worth nothing. It is in danger of being cursed by God and will be destroyed by fire. This is the word of God, and we thank God for his word tonight. Friends, the first time I read verse 6 here, Hebrews 6 verse 6, it was quite a shocker. Let me read that again. And then they abandoned their faith. It is impossible to bring them back to repent again because they are again crucifying the Son of God and exposing him to public shame. Now friends, if you look at that verse, at first glance, it seems like if you once come to faith, if you are born again, if you repent, then it is impossible, and you backslide, then it's impossible for you to come back to faith again. Now impossible there is quite a tricky word, but I mean it, it, it says it in the word of God. That is why a lot of scholars over the ages have debated and, and thought about this. And then, for example, Erasmus held that impossible should be seen as a hyperbole, which is an exagger exaggeration to illustrate the point. Because he feels that impossible there should be regarded as so difficult that it's almost, it almost borderline, it's almost borderline impossible. Another one, Bengal, held that what is impossible for man is possible for God. And people who have fallen away from faith should be left to the mercy of God. But if we read this verse in context, we see something else here. Firstly, the context of the, the time frame where it happened. That was in the, in the time where persecution was at the, at the order of the day. So it, it was very common for people to abandon their faith in order to save their lives. But that was seen as a blow in the stomach of the church. And also, like it says here, again crucifying the Son of God and exposing him to public shame. Context also is the way it is situated in, or way it's written in the Bible. The verses that comes before that give us a clue to what is happening here. And that is Hebrews 5 from verse 11. It says here, There is much we have to say about this matter, but it is hard to explain to you because you are so slow to understand. There has been enough time for you to be teachers, yet you are still in need of someone to teach you the first lessons of God's message. Instead of eating food, you still have to drink milk. Anyone 
who has to drink milk is still a child, without any experience in the matter of right and wrong. Solid food, on the other hand, is for adults, who through practice are able to distinguish between good and evil. Now, the writer of Hebrews here spoke to, to new Christians, which were exposed to, to persecution. And not persecution as in having a difficult time. They were actually killed for their faith. He sees those people who abandoned their faith in order to save their lives as baby Christians. Christians who are, are still in need of milk. Solid food is not for them yet. And I think for us the lesson is here that if look if someone is not or well, something is not is not growing, it's actually dying. Because even people when you are old, you're still growing, your skin grows, your nails grow, your hair grows, everything grows. If you're not growing, then you're actually busy dying. So that is that is a lesson here. We should always make sure that, that we go spiritually. We should make sure that we receive spiritual food. And also not only milk, we should upgrade to solid food at, at some stage. Because only then will we be able to withstand everything. If we are still immature, then we are still, if we are still immature Christians, then most of the time our, our own self, our sinful self, our, our fleshly existence will win the battle between good and evil instead of the spiritual. So yes, friends, the key here is to make sure that we go spiritually. And the way to grow spiritually is to read the Word, to study the Word, and to meditate on it and, and to make it part of us, to make it part of our everyday living. And also to make sure that where we get our spiritual food from is legit sources. Because unfortunately in this world today there are so many people who, who give themselves, themselves out as spiritual leaders but they're actually busy with, with evil plans. They're false prophets. And the only way to test them is against, or, or you know, test them against the Word of God. If they are against the Word of God in any shape or form, they are not from God, and that spiritual food is not, is not legit. So friends, let us be careful where we get spiritual food from, and let, it, let us also make sure that we make the effort to grow. Because if we are not growing, we are dying. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your word tonight. Thank you that your, your word is a life-giving word. It's not just dead pages or dead words on, on pages. But it is actually life-giving and alive in us. Lord, we ask that you will lead us through your word and through your Holy Spirit to study your word and to make sure that where we get our spiritual food from is legit. Lord, we ask that you will be with each and every one of us and that you will help us to distinguish between good and evil, between false prophets and prophets that are actually from you. And to help us stand even through persecution. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, friends.